much of an opening statement. It's like, you know, life in the Big Ten. Like, uh, you know, there's game after game after game, and they're all challenging. They're all tough. Uh, we need to, like, prepare ourselves to win every single game, and then we need to execute our plan, and then we need to go out and try and do it. And, um, you know, we've been in two straight, you know, pretty tough environments um, at Ohio State at Iowa, and then, you know, it gets tougher at Indiana. So we just have to prepare the same exact way. we got to put ourselves in position to win, and then we need to execute um, in terms of what we're doing. So, you know, back to work today and, uh, you know, see, how, see what we can do to get better. Mike, in the, the post-game presser, you seem pretty frustrated with the, the second-half effort. How do you rectify something like, like that compared to sort of, uh, I guess, a, a tactical situation where you, you guys don't meet the, meet the bar? Yeah. Um, you know, at about 3 o'clock today, they're going to watch some of it. So, right, that, that changes some things when you see yourself um, not doing it. Um, you know, that, that kind of changes some things or it brings some clarity to it. So, um, I don't know, they, they kind of flipped it on us. It was something that was important to us going into that game, uh, the rebounding part. And, you know, I just didn't think we had the same effort level in terms of our focus, I guess, the same focus level in doing what we had to do to keep them off the glass in the second half. And then, you know, they got going, right? That was one thing we talked about was, you know, they had, you know, they have a great home environment. Yeah, they had a sold-out crowd, and um, you know, it's hard to play there. But if you don't turn the basketball over, where they're getting run-out layups, now the crowd's getting into it because they're pressing. You don't give up offensive rebounds where they're scoring, and they're getting momentum, and the crowd's getting into it. Like I felt like we did a good job of that in the first half of keeping the crowd completely out of the game, um, but we didn't maintain our focus and. Yeah, you know, it's something in the area where we have to get better. But at the end of the day, like, you know, I told I told our guys in the locker room, like, you know, they outcoached us. Like, Fran McCaffrey outcoached me. Their starters outplayed our starters. Their bench outplayed our bench. Like, yeah, you know, I thought Chelsea was pretty good. So I don't, I, she probably came back with a win. But, like, the rest of us need to be better. And um, from the top to the bottom, we all need to be better. Mike, I've seen some teams have been able to reschedule non-conference games that they lost. Was that, is that a possibility? And can you also speak to the challenges of playing three road games in a row in this conference? Yeah, um, we looked into it. We looked into trying to do that to, to get some, you know, especially once Minnesota got canceled, you know, trying to find some opponents that we could get on short notice. Um, then uh, we weren't able to do it. And then, you know, we're at the kind of the mercy of the Big Ten of when we play that game. So we can't go back and schedule a non-conference game without knowing right. when they're going to squeeze the Minnesota game in. So that handcuffs us as well. So we can't, you know, there's just, we can't take a date away from the Big Ten that they may possibly put Minnesota in there. Um, so, it, you know, we're kind of stuck with, with what we got right now. I, you know, I'd love to play more. And, um, give our guys some, some more games at home. Um, so, you know, yeah, it stinks that we get three straight on the road, but, like, you got to play it. Like, nobody's going to, uh, you know, nobody feels sorry for us, right? But we just we can't feel sorry for ourselves either. Like, we got to prepare to go and win. And if we do it, if we play hard for 40 minutes, if we focus for 40 minutes, we can do it. Like, we can go there and win on Wednesday. Um, but, you know, you have to be you have to be better than somebody on the road. You can't just be average. You got to be better than them on the road. And uh, that's what we need to do. So um, we'll just wait and see when when we play Minnesota. Micah, you guys are playing Iowa twice in nine days. Does kind of the game plan change when you have such a short turnaround time on a rematch like that? Not too much. Um, you know, you go back and you look at what what went right and what went wrong, and you try and make small adjustments in that. Um, but I don't think you can totally flip in terms of what what you do. You know, there, there's areas that we can look at and clean up and be better 
Um, there's things I thought we did well, and we just need more of it. So uh, when it's such a quick turnaround, there's no like, you know, drastic measures that you do. You just say, hey, we can't turn the ball over as much. We can't send them to the free throw line. Got to keep them off the offensive glass, and uh, the rest of the stuff keep doing it. Every team in America is going to miss shots, going to have a game where they have a lot of turnovers. It just happens when you have a long season. But good teams, it, it seems that the frequency at which those happen is less and less. What are the variables that lead to decreasing those frequencies between games, like the, the sort of inevitable clunkers that come along the way? Yeah. Um, you know, we've always kept a kind of a defensive mindset since I, you know, since we've started practice. And I think... You know, you're seeing that with our team. I think that's what's helping us stay in games. Um, right now, you know, our problem is our offense. Our offense hasn't been very good. And, um, you know, that's where we're going to get to work here in the next few days is trying to improve that. Um, you know, we gave them all those numbers when we came back from Christmas, and we were about 80th in the country in both. We were right around the same area offensively and defensively. Our defense is actually 59th in the country now, but now our offense is 105th. So, you know, we're getting worse in, in that area. So we need to focus on that. Like, how do we be better? Um, you know, our defense will keep you from sustaining those long stretches. But now how do we be better so we don't have those long stretches? It's really hard to um, – we'll go in stretches where we're really guarding and we're getting stops, but we're not scoring. Right, and then it flips, and where you start scoring, but then you can't get stops. So like that's that's what the Iowa game was like. You know, they 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 were dusting us in the first you know four minutes of the game. They scored 14 points. They scored 16 more the rest of the half. You know, and then the second half starts we're back even. Then like they start getting those offensive rebounds while we're scoring. So we're scoring. We're start you know we have a chance to come back and crack into that margin. But now we're not doing it on the other end. So the consistency of continuing to guard even through struggles, but continuing to guard even through the, the good times as well um, is what we need. So we're going to get to work on fixing our offense so we don't have those long, long ruts. And I'm kind of curious, you've coached on some really good teams, the guys that have had a lot of success, have had a lot of talent. I imagine coaching a team like that is different than, and I want to say this in like the most accurate way possible. Guys that are, are different than maybe Jason Tatum's a different basketball player than Miles Dredd. Yeah. That's not a knock on Miles. They're just they're different kinds of players. They've got different kinds of skill sets and talent levels and things like that. How does coaching adjust as you sort of work with what you have and making that better rather than just doing the same thing for all the different guys? Yeah, uh, you, you have to do, I think part of coaching is doing, um, adjusting to what your team does well. And um, and that changes. Like that can change from thing to thing uh, in terms of like this is something that at the start of the year, like hey, this is something that I thought we would do well. And now you play a few games, you're like, okay, we're not very good at that. We need to adjust that and move to something else. Um, when you have good individual players, like sometimes they can bail you out, right? Like you know, you don't have to be perfect because you know at the end of the day. Jason Tatum can go make a play for you, go score. Like um, you don't always have that in college. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. Uh, you have to adjust and figure out what do we do best, and now let's get to more of that. And I think that's where our struggles are lying right now. We don't do enough of what we do best, um, and you see it in short spurts. Now it's about continuing that throughout the whole game. So. I guess that's hopefully that answers your, your question on that. Yeah, so kind of backtracking to Saturday here. Um, you held the conference's leading score to just 15 points in 40 minutes of play. Um, are you happy with that, you know, your defensive effort there? And, you know, how do you tackle some of those other offensive pieces that Iowa has um, next time you play them? Yeah. They, um, I was one of the teams that really puts you in a bind because they're, they can get scoring from the perimeter from their four and their five position, right? When they put, you know, both Murray brothers out there, um, you know, Chris is obviously a, sorry, I'm getting confused here. Keegan is a really good player. 
Chris is 24. Yes. Um, Keegan is the one that puts pressure on you, right? He posts at the rim. He can step out and score. Like he's he's going to get his name called one of the top ten picks this year. His brother, like, goes a little bit under the radar, but like he puts you in a bind because he sets so many screens that you have to help on some of those guys that are curling the rim. Now he's popping out, catching shooting threes. He's popping out, catching driving it. Like, you don't face that very much in the Big Ten. Like, you don't see it very much. And it puts pressure on guys that aren't used to guarding on the perimeter in terms of, now I have to help, but then i got to get back out to this guy, take away his shot, and take away his drive. And, you know, that's you know part of the reason why Iowa's so good. they got guys that can shoot, but they also got big guys that kind of put you in the bind a little bit. So, um you know, I felt like we did a good job of taking away some of their stuff, but he got loose a little bit um, and got some threes after he was setting back screens and popping and um, kind of put us in long closeouts with our big. So, you know, that might be something we we have to adjust a little bit. Like when they have both of those brothers in the game, that we may have to change a, a couple of different things to keep those guys from popping and um, shooting in those openings. Hey, Mike, thanks for your time. Um, are you happy with the pace that you guys are playing with on offense right now? I think it can always get better. Uh, we're not attacking enough in transition when we have the opportunities. Like we're getting stops, we're getting a lot of stops. Like our defense is playing well, um, but we're not running. We need sprinters. That, that's part of. If you would come and sit through our film session today, you'd see some of that. If like, I don't know. You think back to go back to our Indiana game. It was January 2nd, feels like three moons ago, but like like we got some transition corner threes because we were sprinting in transition. We were getting the ball down the floor a little bit. We haven't done that in the last few games. Um, that's an area where I think we need to improve. Um, but it's also like as a coach, you, you know, you feel like there's an area that you need to improve in and you like attack that area. It's like the old cartoon. You put your finger in there and the water starts shooting out the other way, right? That's that's your biggest fear. That's my biggest fear as a coach. We talk about offense here for, you know, today and tomorrow we need to be better going into IU. And now, you know, they scored 60 points when they were here the last time. Um, do we focus so much on offense they get 75, right? And then it's all for not. Then we got to go back to doing the other stuff. Like, you have to be able to do everything. Um, you know, our transition, our pace doesn't, it doesn't become much of a factor if we're scoring, if we're getting better shots, um, which we need to do more if we're not turning the basketball over. Uh, we're getting more opportunities, we're probably scoring more points. So um, I don't think playing at a really crazy pace would be the best thing for us, though, especially not Iowa, Indiana. Like, the, you're giving the other team more opportunities as well. And, like, I love our team, but. You know, if we were drafting, you know, where's our first guy get picked? We're, you know, going through the Big Ten and drafting people. Like, you know, who's getting picked? Who's getting picked in the top ten? I don't, I don't know that. Like, I haven't looked at it, but I know there's three dudes who are going to get picked in the NBA top tens. So they're probably going one, two, three. And you're probably throwing in Zach Eady or Kofi Coburn, Travion Williams, uh, Chris Murray, a Brad, um, Brad Davison. Andre Curbelo, I could probably keep going if you want me to. Ron Harper, Geo Baker, like, you know, we're not at the top of the shop in terms of talent level, so we need to do what we can to stay in it. Hey, Coach, what does the upcoming Coaches vs. Cancer game calls mean to you? You know, for me, it's a, um, it's a, it's a cause that since I've gotten here, it's been something that's it's been important, um, you know, for myself, for my family. Um, you know, my wife lost her mother to cancer. Uh, my mom is a cancer survivor, and she'll actually be in town uh, for the game. You know, uh, both of my parents are coming in town for the game, and uh, I believe it's February 1st, right? January 31st. January 31st, so right close to then. Um, so, you know, it, it's an important cause. I, I think. It's a way for us as a team and a program to do a small part you know, for 
helping the, the CBC Penn State organization. And, um, yeah, it's the, all I can do, like, to, to get to get the um, to kind of get the word out in terms of what we're doing as an organization, uh, but to also say thank you to the people that have helped, to the people that are on the committee that are spending, you know, volunteering their time, but also the people that have donated to this cause as well. So um, it's a big game. I'm, you know, we want to play well. We want to play well for the people that are coming and, uh, like I said, get momentum going and building up towards the events that are coming after the game as well. Mike, to go back to what Ben asked earlier, what do you think you guys do best offensively and what's preventing you from being uh, more more aggressive with that, I guess? Um, I don't know. There's probably like small details in terms of what we need to do better. Like, um, you know, I think our screening needs to improve, whether that's ball screens or screens off the ball. Uh, I think that all needs to get better. So, like, small technical things of, like, angles in terms of where we're setting our ball screens, how we're setting our down screens and everything else, uh, I think that creates help opportunities for the other teams. And that's what we're not getting to. We're allowing too many people to go under screens. Now they don't have to help. Now you're never playing against a closeout. Which is where we're, you know, which is where we could be really good at, right? Now we're getting threes, or we're playing off our shot fake, we're driving, we're making decisions. Those are all things that are helpful. So uh, we got to get back to screening the right way um, to get downhill and get into the paint. We were a really good team scoring in the paint early in the season, uh, getting to the rim, scoring more, which draws help. Now we're kicking out and we're getting threes. Um, you know, we haven't gotten help very much. We haven't broken the defense down. Through that, and part of that goes back to our screening uh, and getting open shots or, or causing help. Last question. You mentioned uh, working on one thing and the other thing sort of dropping off a little bit. You're not the first coach that I've heard say that, and I've always wondered what the reason is for that. You know, if you work on corner threes and screens for a week and then work on zone defense the next week, why do your screens and corner threes get worse from a week off with a bunch of guys that have played basketball their entire lives? I mean, what is the – you're not making this up. It clearly happens. Yeah. What is the thing that leads to that? I don't know. It's probably the same reason why I tell my kids to take the trash out at 8. And then at 11, the trash is still sitting in the same spot. I, got, I mean, kids lose focus. Kids lose – you know, they forget what they tell or what you tell them. Um, you know, you have to constantly do things over and over to get it ingrained. And that's part of, like, it's almost like that's where the teaching of, like, instead of being a coach, that's where you become a teacher. Like, the things that you emphasize are the things that you become. So, but you can't emphasize everything, right? So it's like, what's the most important things that you need to emphasize? Because you're going to get good at those. Um, but if you if you can't put that same emphasis on something else, it just drifts to the back of their mind. And um, I wish I wish I was some kind of psychologist or something like that, and I'd be able to figure out the best way they learn and the best way to retain and the best way to continue to do stuff. But um, it also gets to now once we start getting later in the season, we don't get as much practice time. Like we do, but guys are banged up. We're playing more games, so we shorten. You know, because we got to get to the games and we got to be fresh. So you're shortening your time to practice. So you're really squeezing, like, this is the most important stuff, right? And then at the same time, you know, they're focused on different things about our defense or our offense. And then you also got to prepare for Indiana. So they're like, okay, well, Trace Jackson does this. Or I could be guarding Race Thompson. He does this. Hey, on this play, we're going to do this. Now you're starting to get up there into the amount of things that they're, you know, intaking into their brains, um, you know, from three to six. You know, they're doing classwork at the same time. They're going to class. They're doing other stuff. So from the morning until practice, and then once practice is over, who knows what's being inputted into that brain, right? It's like my video games. I got different songs. You know, Gunna's new album, all that stuff. So. Uh, there's only so much that, that can be retained at one time. Um, I know I'm not very smart, and I can't remember a lot of things. So um, 
I feel for these guys. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you.